Amen. And we're going to open up in, in, in prayer this morning, amen, as, as a body of believers. I want you to know that the Spirit moves, amen, through, through, a, through a praying body. And we're all going to come in agreement this morning. Father, we come before you this morning, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord Heavenly Father, that you are a living God. Lord, and we just ask you and we invite you, Lord God, to send the presence of your Holy Spirit into this place today. That you speak to each and every single one of us this morning as we gather here in agreement knowing that you are the one that has to set us free. You are the one that wants to speak to us. You are the one that desires to have a relationship with each and every single one of us. And I ask you to move in power and might today that you meet the need of each and every single individual here. That you use your anointing to begin to pour out among the people, Lord God, to just give us power and authority. Lord God, over the ways of the world and the flesh and the enemy. And we thank you this morning and we give you all the honor and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to go ahead and let the kids go off to class this morning. Um. <laughs> How many of you guys have been praying for this fast that we call, amen? Inquiring on, on, on the Lord, you know what I mean, in, in specifics. You know what I mean? Not only for your personal life, but as well as for, you know, God's will. You know, not only God's will in your life, but God's will for the church. God's will for the lost. You know, God's will in general and what's going on in, in, this, in this world today. I know it's not going to be easy. Uh, many have trouble fasting just one meal. That's, I mean, should I say missing a meal? Many have trouble just missing a meal, but to go fasting? And for 21 days. But I believe the Lord wants to begin to Place the men and women on the threshing floor. Why? Because it's time to sift the wheat from the chaff. The believer from the unbeliever. The person who's empowered by the Holy Spirit and the person who doesn't have the Holy Spirit. We're living in a time now where Many, you know, are confused in the things of the Lord. When it comes to speaking in tongues, when it comes to an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, uh, I don't believe this and I don't believe that. And, and you know what, that's not real and that's pretend and this and that. And, you know, I'm going to show you something here this morning in Scripture. But I want to talk to you about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and how biblical the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is in a believer's life. Go with me this morning to Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through, through 31. Just to lay a little foundation here. And Jesus went on from there. Two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. 
When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, Let it be done for, for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Then Jesus warned them sternly, Be sure that no one finds out. For they went out and spread the news about him throughout, but they went out and spread the whole news about him throughout the whole area. You know, in order to serve God, you have to have faith. <coughs> Key, the most important thing is you cannot believe and you cannot receive from God if you do not believe and you don't have faith. And I want you to know that the greatest deception of the enemy is to get you to have unbelief. In your life. He don't want you to believe in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He don't want you to believe in the fruits of the Spirit. He don't want you to believe that God is able to change you. He don't want you to believe, amen, that, 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 that you need to do all these things that God has commanded us to do through Scripture. He doesn't want you to believe that there's power in prayer. But I like what he says here. In these first two verses of 27 and 28. And he says, as Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Amen. Do you believe that God can change your life? There are many living testimonies in here to the fact that, that God has changed lives, that God has restored marriages, that, that God is a God of healing, that, that God is a God of restoration, that God is a God of peace. Amen. But you know, the way that they received that is they had to believe it. They had to believe it. You know, many Christians right now don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They believe that it only fell on the day of Pentecost and that was it and that, that was when that outpouring took place and many different denominations, you know, stick upon that. But I'm here to tell you this morning that that is so false and so untrue because we've seen many moves of God in the United States, in America, you know, many of times. Many of times. Why? Because God is real and God is pouring His Spirit out upon people. But the unbelief, amen, the unbelief of people is, what, is what's causing so, so much confusion. Now go with me to Romans, and we're going to read in chapter 8. And I just want to uh, read verses 1 through 17 real quick. Also to, to set another little foundation. Therefore there... Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ, because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. The Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, has set you free. Amen. Amen? Free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do, since it was weakened by the flesh, by unbelief, the flesh doesn't want to believe in the spiritual. The flesh doesn't want to believe in the supernatural. And the flesh is what weakens the power of God. All the naysayers weaken the power of God. And it says, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending His own Son in the likeness of simple flesh as a sin offering in order that the law requirement would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to to the Spirit. <coughs> you know, faith is, is the evidence of things not seen, but hoped for is with the definition that they give you. Walking according to the Spirit instead of to, to the flesh. And how do we walk by the Spirit? Man, it's, you got to be crazy. I'm just trying to tell you, stop trying to be so politically correct. 
Stop trying to fit in here and be like this and be like that when you got to be crazy for the things of Jesus. You got to be abnormal. You got to be, you know what I mean, different than everybody else. Why? Because you're walking according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. This is what people say you should act like and what you should believe. But guess what? This is what the spirit says I should be doing. The spirit... And we have to walk like that. Man, how do you expect to be on fire for God if you can't walk in the Spirit? Why? Because the flesh doesn't want you to be on fire for God. The Spirit wants you to be all droopy, depressed, down and out. But the Spirit wants you to be alive. The Spirit wants you to be alive. And it says, For those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on the things of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have your mind set upon that. Amen. And I'm going to break this down for you a little bit more as we get into the message a little bit more about, about our minds and, and what our bodies are, are, are called to, to be Amen. When we're, when we're baptized by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set of the spirit is life and peace and the mind set in the spirit is life and peace man I don't have no peace in my life pastor well are you walking after the flesh or are you walking according to the spirit because you'll never have peace in your mind if you're walking according According to the flesh, you will never have enough if you're walking according to the flesh. But if you are walking in the Spirit, you will always be satisfied. You will always have more than enough because my God is more than able. More than able. Amen, amen. The mind set on the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Him. Now if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then He who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through His Spirit who lives in you. That's right, that's right. Well, bring it to life. Amen, amen. You know what? A renewing of the mind. Amen. Create in me a pure heart, O oh Lord. Amen, and amen. renew a right spirit within me, Lord God. You know, and that's what we have to do. You know what, Lord, right now? Amen. Change me, Lord, right now. I don't want to believe like everybody else believes. I don't want to believe like my family believes. I don't want to believe like my neighbor believes. But I want to believe with the Holy Spirit living inside of me that gave me life. I want to be different. I want to be set apart. I want to be consecrated. I want to be on fire for you, Lord God. Passionate. So many people right now, they don't even know how to pray. They even have trouble praying. Why? Because they're walking according to the flesh. Man, the flesh doesn't want you to break through. And our God is a God of breakthrough. So many people would rather stand around talking and lollygagging in every church in America when it comes to prayer. Instead of buying their zippers at the door when they should have to put them on, amen, and get in here and know that we're here to pray. Amen. To pray. Amen. That's right. Why? Because I'm tired of walking after the flesh. Amen. Why? Because the more that you feed the flesh, the more that your flesh is going to become dominant. But the more that you feed the spirit, the more that your spirit will become dominant. Amen. Who are we feeding? It's obvious to most. The flesh. And I'm not saying by your outside appearance and all that stuff. That's right. But the Bible tells us out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's for sure. What's coming out of your heart? Amen. Amen. Are you loving to your wife? Or do you speak death all the time? 
Do you have any peace? Or does hatred only come out all the time? I don't like this and I don't like that. Well, are you praying about it for God to make a change? Are you walking according to the flesh or the spirit? You know what? I see this and I don't like it, but I'm not going to complain about it. I'm going to place it in your hands, Lord God. And I'm going to ask you to show me how to pray so this may change. Especially amongst your co You know what? God doesn't put us in places for no reason. Everything is ordained by God. You're not at your job because you know what? You got lucky. You're there because God placed you there. And it's not there just to take up space and to join in and to be like the rest of them. You're there to win souls for Jesus. You know, most Christians have a hard time. Because they feel like they don't fit in. Because we don't fit in. But what happens is in that not fitting in, what happens is you separate yourself. And you seclude yourself. Man, I I can't stand hearing this. I can't stand hearing that. So you separate yourself from where God placed you. Instead of being filled with the Spirit and saying, Hey, you know what? We shouldn't be talking like that. You know, let's make a challenge. Let's do this, let's do that. And as you're praying in the spirit to begin to watch God, you know, break through in their life to begin to make change. And it ain't going to happen right away. That's right. It takes time in some people, especially those who do not know the Lord. That's right. right. Who don't go to church. You know what? But the whole thing is trying to get them to a place to where, you know what? They're going to be like, man, God is so real that I'm going to accept him right now as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Right. As Lord and Savior. Right. In verse 12, he says, so then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Amen. Because if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. That's right. That's right. Spiritually. It's only a matter of time before a person who has been baptized by the Holy Spirit to die spiritually. And you see it. You see it in churches around the world right now to this very moment. Man, they've taken prayer out of the churches. They've removed prayer meetings from the churches. Altar calls. You don't even see people operating in the spirit no more, in the gifts of the spirit. That's right. That's right. You know, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, the message coming forth in tongues? Where's the interpretation of tongues? Amen. Where's, where's the outpouring at? You don't see it like you used to see it back in the 1800s and the 1900s and the early 20th century. You don't see that anymore in the time that we're living in. It's rare. And to people, it seems crazy now. That's right, that's right. When before it was expected. Amen, amen. Man, you didn't want to go to church if you didn't see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's right. You didn't want to go to church if you didn't see a manifestation of the fruits of the Spirit. You're like, I don't want to go there. That's a dead church. That's right. And now everybody has become accustomed to a dead church. That's right. To a dead church. It's normal to them. To have all the things of the world inside of the church and they think that it's empowered. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body and then you will live. For all those led by by God's spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children also heirs and heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. And if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. That's right. That's right. You know, a lot of times, you know what I mean, a lot of people, they, they take, you know what I mean, the things that life throws at them as suffering. That's, right. that's not suffering, that's a situation. That's right, that's right. That's a situation. Amen. You know what, you can't, that's life. That's right. There's going to be times that you struggle to pay your bills. That's right. Why? Because it's a, a fluctuation in the economy. 
This has been going on since, you know, since, since way back when. It, it ain't ever going to change. But the thing is, is that the people right here where he, where he talks about, you know what I mean, about, about dying and suffering. That's right. You know what, do, do, you, do you suffer in the flesh to come and break down and to get into prayer, to yeah. fast, the Holy to fast yeah. and to pray because certain things only come off by praying and fasting? Yeah. Amen, amen. Man, I just can't kick habit I just can't kick this habit well some things only come off by praying and fasting oh I have a hard time believing I have a hard time believing well some things only come off by prayer and fasting That's right. That's right. praying and fasting That's right. the outpouring of the Holy Spirit go with me to Acts chapter 10 Verses 44 and 45. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. But how did it happen? See, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit first took place in Peter. Amen, amen. That's right. Peter was praying and he received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when he spoke to the people, he spoke to them with authority <laughs> and with power. And they heard it and they received it. Amen. You want to know why many people don't receive right now? Amen. It's plain and, plain and simple. Because the person who's been placed behind the pulpit isn't filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The church isn't filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. And it's just not from one individual. It's collectively Amen. to be Amen. filled with the Spirit of God. If we want to see people come to the Lord, if we want to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, then it's going to take place right here with you and I praying and being filled with the Spirit of Amen. God. And I thank God for the month that we're going into Amen. prayer. Why? Because if we've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, we need to get baptized Amen. in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And for real. Amen. And for real. That's right. Go with me to chapter 9, verse 17. And while Peter was deeply perplexed. No, that's the wrong one. 9, 17. Ananias went and entered the house he placed his hands on him and said brother Saul the Lord Jesus was appeared to you on the road you were traveling he sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit Amen. to be filled with the Holy Spirit it's not just a one time occurrence see God wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit God wants you to speak in tongues. God wants you to be anointed and be empowered to begin to lay hands on individuals, to cast out demons, amen, to set the oppressed free. That's what he's called us to do. Amen. That's what he's called us to do. But just like we seen with the disciples as I shared on Friday night, amen. he said, these only come out. By prayer and fasting. That's right. That's right. Man, Lord, I prayed for them to, to be healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. But they died still. Yes. But... Well, were you praying and fasting? That's right. That's right. Why? Because there's no anointing there. That's right. That's right. No anointing. That's right. The men and women of God have no anointing in these last days. Some do, but not everybody. Why? Because some are praying, some are fasting, some are trusting in the living God, some are empowered, amen, and, and, they, and they deny themselves and they live for the Lord. They don't live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Amen, amen. You know, there's a lot of people who like to, you know, talk down about the Trinity. And you hear it all over. 
You got the oneness churches. Oh, you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus only. Taking the whole book of Acts out of context. That's right. That's right. Preach it. He wasn't just telling them about in the name of Jesus, you know what I mean? He was trying to tell them, you know what, that you guys got to stop being baptized by men. Right. And you got to be baptized by Jesus, amen, amen. About, by him. Amen. So that way, you know what I mean, you can receive what he has for you. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. He was taking them from a man's baptism to a spiritual baptism. A baptism in the Holy Ghost, not just to baptize somebody in the name of Jesus. Why? Because we know that God is God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. All three in one. They're the same person. The Trinity. And the Trinity is clearly spoken of throughout the Bible. Clearly throughout the Bible. Even though the word does not occur, we can clearly see it in Scripture. Clearly. Amen. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, you're going to believe it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Go with me to Genesis chapter 1. The very first book. Amen. Verses 1 and 2. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Amen. Right now, Lord, I pray that people around the world will begin to believe. Amen. And he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Who did? God, and now the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the surface of the watery depths and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. So not only was God right there in the beginning, but the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Now how do we get God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Now, we got the very first book of the Bible. Now, they tell us to read the Gospels. Amen. Go with me to the book of John, chapter 1. Eee. Right now, Lord, bring life unto your people, Lord God. Right now, Lord, I pray it in the name of Jesus. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. Oh, man, those first verses and these first, yes, those first and these first ones. Amen? Why? Because we don't want you to get lost in the other chapters. We want to give you the very first verses. Thank you, Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. What does Scripture tell us the Word is? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Word. And in the beginning, before anything was created, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen, amen. He was with them in the beginning. Yes. He was with God in the beginning, it tells us in verse 2. What does it say in verse 2? Go to verse 2. He was with, he was in the beginning with God. That's right, that's right. Hallelujah. He was there in the beginning. Before everything was created. That's right. That's right. Before you see little monitos and everything walking on the face of this earth. Before humans were created. That's right. Mm -hmm. Little dinosaurs. <laughs> well, how could God be for real? You weren't here yet, stupid. That's right. That's right. It's not that hard. That's right. Man, do you know how much time he laughs through the Bible? Yes. Man. First he formed a perfect world. Amen, amen. Boom. Yes. Oh, man, this is cool. Yes. Let me do this. Yes. Boom. Amen. Let me do this. Boom. Let me do this. Booyah. <laughs> huh? Check it out. Man. <laughs> man, God is so real. And in verse, three, in verse 3, it says, All things were created through him. And apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. And in him was life, and that life was the light of men. Amen. That light shines in the darkness. And it, yet the darkness did not, come, it did not overcome it. Amen, amen. That's right. That's right. Over the, over the face of the earth. 
God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. Well, how can we see this here too? 1 Corinthians. Chapter 12, verses 4 and 6, 4 through 6. And he goes on to say, Now there are different gifts, Amen. but the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what, a Spirit? Yeah. And there are different ministries, but the same Lord. Amen. Spirit, Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God Amen. produces each gift in each person. That's right. Oh, man. That's right. The Spirit, the Son, and God right there all in one. Amen. And it said that they're the same. That's right. It didn't say that they were different, that they were apart, that one was mightier than the other, that they are the exact same. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go with me to Matthew 28, 19. This is just the foundation. <laughs> go therefore and make disciples of all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's red letter. Yes. That's Jesus. Yes. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 But you're only supposed to baptize in the name of Jesus. You're only supposed to do this unless you... You know what? I believe what Jesus says over any person in the whole world. Amen. In the book of Acts, it was in red letter. Still God's inspired word, but he was meaning something else. That's right. He was meaning him to get out of the, the baptism of, 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 of the individual. That's right. And wanted them to be baptized fully. Amen. People are so crazy these days, man. Yes, they are. So crazy. You know, I could care less if, you know what I mean, if it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, get baptized and get filled with the Holy Ghost and get empowered amen, and start winning amen, souls amen, for Christ. Amen. And stop fighting over the stupid things. That's right. That's right. People fight over the most immature things. Why? Because they're immature in their walk. That's right. That's right. Immature. It is also clear that the Holy Spirit has interaction with us. Amen, amen. Right now, amen. the Holy Spirit has interaction amen, with His people. Amen, amen, amen. Go with me to Romans chapter 14. Man, Pastor, you use a lot of scripture. Yeah. Because I don't want it in my words. It has to be Jesus' words. Amen. Romans 14, verses 17 through 18. And it says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And whoever serves Christ in this way is acceptable to God and receives human approval. Amen. Right now, living your life. Amen. It's not just about eating and drinking and all this stuff. It's about being filled with the presence of God, with the Holy Spirit, Amen. and living your Amen. life in spirit and not in the flesh. Amen. Right now. Amen. That's right. This book is after the book of Acts. Amen. Amen. What? That's right. Yeah, after the book of Acts. That's right. That's right. But it was only in the book of Acts? No. no. It was after the book of Acts. We're still living the book of Acts right now. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's We're right. still living it right now. That's right. That's right. Man. People are heavy duty. <laughs> Go with me to 1 Peter. Chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Greetings. <laughs> 
Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to those chosen, living as exiles, dispersed abroad in Pontius, Galatea, um, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit Amen. to be obedient and to be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Amen. See, the Holy Spirit works inside of you continually to change you, to sanctify you, to change you and sanctify you Amen. so that way you can get rid of the disbelief so that way he can give you a heart of God's own. Amen. So that way he can empower you. Amen. Now verse 12. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. These things, they have now been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Amen. Angels long to catch a glimpse of these things. Amen. Amen. People preaching with an anointing filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You know what? He wants ministers around the world to be preaching with anointing filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is speaking through them. Amen. He wants us to speak to our family filled with anointing, filled Amen. with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not what we want to tell them, not with all this head knowledge. Oh, well, I read the Bible, and the Bible uh, told me, uh, 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 shush. I don't want to hear what you think. I want the Holy Ghost speaking through you. Why? To bring me conviction, amen, to change my life. That's what I want. That's right. That's right. Ooh, man. You know it. Amen. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, your family members will stop inviting you around. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right, brother. You're too Holy Ghost for them. Híjole. <laughs> Don't come. He's going to want to pray over the carne. Amen. Amen. He's going to want to pray over the steaks. Amen. Man, I just want to eat them. <laughs> Oh, man, don't tell them to come. Why? Because we're going to be drinking and, and we say we go to church and, and I don't want them to say something to us that we shouldn't be drinking. Huh? <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> judging you. I'm just telling you what you ain't supposed to be doing. That ain't judging you. You're convicted. That's why you feel like you're being judged. This change. Pour that alcohol out. Put all that garbage down. Get rid of it. That's right. That's right. Or how about all the family members when you come around? You know when you're empowered by the Holy Ghost, man, because they cuss like drunken sailors and you walk in. Oh, sorry. Man, man, I didn't mean to say that. Sorry, man. Oh, man. Man, I don't like it when he comes around. Why? Because I can't be myself. That's right. That's right. Man, I'm just telling them, amen, in the name of Jesus. I didn't tell you to change because I came around. That's your conviction, not mine. The steak takes just as good as me as it does to you. But you're having a hard time eating it, and I'm enjoying it. Because I prayed over it, amen, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, you got to worry about wasting all my money on them suds. Why? Because you bought me some pop before I walked in here anyways. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, man, I don't even feel sorry for myself. Because I'm empowered and anointed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because I'm still going to live here with a smile on my face, full of joy. And you're going to be talking about me when I leave. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Amen. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. 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 How many of you like the word of God? Amen. 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 And we're going to read verses 11 through 14. Finally, brothers and sisters. 
Rejoice, become mature, be encouraged, be of the same mind, be at peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Greet one another with holy kisses. All the saints send you greetings. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 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 How can you have fellowship with somebody if they're not with you? That's right. If they're not close to you, uh -huh. you can't. That's right. That's right. You know, it's like a main line right there. Jesus on the main line. When you talk to somebody on the phone, yeah. hey, what's up? You hear their voice and they're talking to you. The Holy Spirit speaks through you Amen. inside of here because Amen. he lives in you. Amen. Amen. You got a direct connection, not only with the Holy Spirit, but straight to God. Why? Because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding. And guess what? The Holy Spirit intercedes on your behalf to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Up and down, up and down, continually. Amen. Lord! Hallelujah! Amen. Man, a lot of times I always see people like this. Jesus! You're trying to look into the atmosphere and through the clouds and all the way and through the universe. God! When it's a heart condition right here at the altar. Holy Spirit, I know you're in there. Huh? I need you to talk to Jesus for me. Why? Because I need some changes to be done right here. And you're right here, right here, to there. Come on. Change me. Huh? That's right. That's right. That's why when I like to pray, I like to pray like this. I'll be. Uh. Amen, amen. I'm rarely like this. Amen, amen. I'm like this. That's right. That's right. That's right. Before the Lord. <laughs> you know, I listen to a lot of loud music too. So you know how in your ears you got to kind of, hey, get kind of close. I don't want to make sure I'm speaking to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hey! <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> and outpouring begins with the desire for prayer. Amen. And when God's people begin to pray. Amen. You know, we desire an outpouring of the Holy Spirit here in Brighton. And, and I've heard it talked about since I was a kid. Oh, we want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and we want revival, and we want this, and we want that. But, man, I rarely ever hear of prayer meetings in Brighton. That's right. That's where right. churches will gather together and pray. That's right. That's right. You know what? Here in Brighton, churches want to be separated, man. And we got to be careful who we hang out with. I want you to know that. We're, we're, not, we're not just like everybody else. We don't want to be letting the wolves come on in here and pray against what we're praying for. You know, we got to be like-minded. we got to be on the same level, you know what I mean? For the same plan and the same purpose. But everybody here, oh, he's going to try to take my people. They ain't your people. And who's trying to take your people? They act like they're gang members or something, man. We're on the west side. We're on the east side. You're on the north side, on the south side. Don't cross the lines. That's right. That's hey, man, right. this is our hood. That's your hood. Nah, this is God's world. Amen. He said, I own the cattle on, 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 on a thousand hills. Amen. Amen. Every single mountain, everything, God owns it. All the people, God owns them. These are all God's people. But it starts through prayer, man. Amen. Amen. And you see the people of God right now that they're starting to decline in their prayer life. That's right. That's right. I remember some predominant praying churches now that are, are, are dwindling. That's right. Why? Because everybody's going to tickle me here, man. That's right. That's right. Preach it. Man, there's a church, I'm not even going to say the name, and it's not here in Brighton. But there's a church that was telling people that if they didn't feel like tithing or they felt like they paid too much tithes, this, this is how much money people are throwing into that church. They put the offering buckets at the front door. They said, take your money back. And I heard of people going in there that didn't even pay tithes. Yeah. 
The whole time they've been serving the Lord and they felt like they were entitled to a handful out of that bucket. That's right. That's right. That's right. I told my wife just jokingly, I said, I go, we ought to send the church down there and we'll just take the buckets for the building fund. <laughs> Since they don't want it, we'll use it. <laughs> and we'll pay a tithe out of it too. Huh? In the name of Jesus. But prayer... You know, and that's why I, I, I believe that the Lord right now, He's calling us in, in this month of April to get into to fasting. Amen, amen. And like I said, I go, I know most of us, you know, when we prayed in the new year, we failed. Yeah. I'm fasting. Yeah, I'm driving through the drive through fast. <laughs> Hopefully nobody sees you. Going to the other one on the other side of town. Why? Because you didn't want somebody to see you at the one in town. Huh? But we're really going to do it this time, church. And I'm going to be praying for you. And you pray for me too. Why? Because it goes back and forth. We need to pray for each other. Man, Lord, strengthen us to go through this. Man. And if my pants start getting and I'll just buy some suspenders. Don't worry about it. Hold them up. I'm not trying to sag. Huh? I'm not sagging. I'll keep them up. But see, we got to get in tune with God because you know what? God wants to pour into your life. He wants to pour into this ministry. He wants to set those free out there. Amen. We're, we're, in, a, we're in a time right now where many people are in bondage, in darkness, and in slavery. Even the Christian people, a lot of times we talk about it and we think about the lost. But what about the Christian people who are in bondage, in darkness, and in slavery? And they don't even know it. We need to pray for them. And that's what we're going to do at the beginning of, of, the, of this month that's coming up. You know, we have seen revival take place and, and, and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We've seen it happen in America many times. In the 1700s, the 1800s, the 1900s, in the, in the 20th century. The first great awakening is what they called it. And, and it happened in, in 1730 to the 1740s. Yes. Yes. 1730 to the 1740s. And it started in England and then to the colonies and then it hit Massachusetts. It hit Massachusetts. Imagine that much time. That was a whole 10 year period right there. Of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit where people were gathering from all over to come and pray. They were coming to pray. Pray over businesses. Pray over homes. Pray over families. And they were just gathering and praying. The second great awakening was in the 1820s to the 1850s. 30 years. And that went out through all, all throughout England and America. All throughout England and America for 30 years, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Man, if I could just get an hour of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit right now. Man, I would think that the rapture was taking place. Be practicing the rapture jump. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man. The third great awakening happened in 1875 through 1885. In Chicago, the Azusa Street Revival. 1906 through, through 1915, Los Angeles. Ooh, man, and that was in a church. And many of us, we, we, we've heard of it, but that was the Azusa Street Revival. Yes. The address was 312 Azusa Street. Amen, amen. There were just gathering there. People were coming all from all over Los Angeles, all over California, gathering at this church for prayer. Amen. They were praying for the community. They were praying for all kinds of things, man. And an outpouring of the Holy Spirit took place. 
Man, that was powerful. And then the 20th century revival, which took place from 1910 to the 1970s in various American cities, most notable in New York and in Los Angeles. You had the Pensacola revivals. That's right, that's right. You had all these revivals that took place. They call them revivals, but they were outpourings, man, of the Holy Spirit, of what was happening. Now people were coming in wheelchairs and left that place walking. That's right, that's right. People were coming with various diseases and sicknesses and were walking out of there regenerated like a brand new person. Man, people were going in there demonically possessed and were walking out, amen, full of the Holy Spirit on fire for God, starting and launching churches around America. Doing outreaches. Man, church, missionary work. And God was pouring money and money and money into these ministries to be used for His glory and honor. And then men wanted to take the reins like if they were the ones that were in control. Yeah, our ministry does this and our ministry does that. Instead of saying, you know what, God's allowed this ministry Amen. to be blessed enough That's right. to bless these people. Uh-huh. God fed these people. Yeah. God built these people's shelters. Uh-huh. God did this. God did that. Oh, we did it. He didn't do nothing. That's right. God did it. That's right. But a revival, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse 30, and, and it comes in, in, in honoring God. He says, therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your fathers would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. Amen. For those who honor me, I will honor. Amen. And those who despise me shall be Lightly esteemed. Amen. Amen. Now we serve God. Amen. Amen. With the first fruits. Yes. With our tithing, with our offering, amen. With with our free will offerings. We always talk about offerings at New Hope. Yeah, we want you to be blessed. It's okay. That's why. Offer it up. Amen. Amen. You know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go offer myself. What? To service the Lord. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're giving out turkeys. Yee, man, all you guys show up freezing. I love you guys. Man, I love you guys. Why? Because you guys are just as crazy as we are. You're going to stand out in the bitter cold to pass out turkeys to families that don't have enough to have a Thanksgiving meal and you guys were out there freezing, handing out turkeys. You were a free will offering. Man, when we go and do street ministry or we go to the parks or feed the homeless, you guys are there. Man, this isn't in my element, but I'm going to go anyways. You know, praise the Lord. And then you get blessed. You're like, I don't know how this is going to be. And then you run into somebody. And you're like, man, that dude blessed me. Amen. Man, and I'm not talking, but just by his testimony or something he shared with you, man. He blessed you and it impacted your life Amen. for the rest of your life, man. Amen. God is so good. Amen. But we have to honor him. Yes. Man, we're not going to be like the rest of America. I want to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to honor God because I'm going to be in church. I'm going to be reading my word. I'm going to be fasting. I'm going to be witnessing. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to honor God. And if you honor him, he'll honor you. It's written. One thing about the Holy Spirit is we cannot act like we have control over him. But we can know what he does. Go with me to John chapter 3 verse 8. See, a lot of people, they like to say, this is my gift and I operate in this gift. And that's the only gift they operate in. It's not what the Bible says. 
Oh, he's a healer. No, you ain't no healer. Jesus is the healer. Right. Hey, man, what are you talking about? That's right. I don't know who lied to you. You better go tell Satan to take all that stuff back. Right. Oh, I only do this. I only interpret in tongues. And then, no, you don't. Right. He might be speaking through yourself because it don't only come through you. It could be through anybody or at least three individuals in the church is what the Bible says. But no more than three. Amen. But it could be anybody during any given service. One week, one week it might be you, one week it might be you, one week it might be you. That's right, that's it's whoever God chooses, the Holy Spirit chooses. That's yes, right, that's you got to be open though and honor God. That's right. Man, Lord, I want to do that. I've never done that before. Okay, boom, here you go. Oh, oh, oh. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Out in the Spirit. Man, I never felt that before. Because you honored God and He used you. And it says the wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So it is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. It's like a blowing. That's right. And it goes through. Uh -huh. That's why a lot of times in the church you'll see it. It'll spread like wildfire. Amen, amen. Somebody will start breaking out in, 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 in laughter or in the presence of God in the front. And it begins to sweep itself yeah. through the church. Yeah. It goes wherever it wants to and just flows to all those vessels that are open. Amen. Why? Because there might be only one individual that's right in the middle right here. Amen. It's open. Yeah. And the rest of them are closed off. So it hits the one in the middle. So that way it could be affecting the ones on the outside. Yeah. And then it goes over there. And it hits the one that's wheeling over there. And it starts spreading through. And it just starts jumping all over. Yeah. And then pretty soon the whole church is all drunk in the spirit. Yeah! yeah. Woo! Yeah. Speaking in tongues. Amen. An outpouring. On fire. Dancing and singing. Yeah. Man, that's what I want to see. Yeah. That's what I want to see, man. Yeah. Then you got those people who come in. Oh, my gosh. They're possessed by demons. Oh. Huh? But you know what the Bible tells us about that in Corinthians? It tells us about, about the order in the church. But see, that order has been misinterpreted. And I've shared this message with you guys many a times. And it tells us that speaking in tongues, amen, that you should speak in tongues in the church. He says, do not ever, you know, refuse people to speak in tongues. Why? Because it's for the unbeliever to believe. Amen. Yeah. And if the believer has a problem with it, then guess what? He better repent and start believing. Amen. Why? Because I want some of that. Amen. A person who hasn't been born again cannot understand the unexplainable works of the Holy Spirit. The natural person will argue the fact. Always, always argues the fact. Yes. You know, and they never bring it up to the pastor, but they always go home or on the way home when they're talking to their friend that brought them to church or when they're talking with their spouse. <sighs> Do you believe what he said? <sighs> He's crazy. <laughs> that ain't for real. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. It's because there's a veil. Because of unbelief. Mm -hmm. You can't believe in some things of God and then not believe in the others. You got to believe in everything. Amen. You got to believe in all of it. Amen. I'm going to give you an example. A regular person has a mind and a soul. And the enemy Satan has robbed them of life. Amen. As well, they are blinded and, are, uh, and, their, and their presumptions have been darkened. Yeah. The enemy has darkened. See, we're born with, with, with a mind and a soul. Who gives us a spirit? Jesus. Jesus. We only have a mind and a soul. Amen. Amen. That thinks naturally, that thinks carnally. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 18. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, That's right. having their understanding darkened. 
being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Amen, 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 amen. They can't understand because the enemy has them blind. Why? Because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. They've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. They're still carnal, mind and, and, and soul. That's it. But the new man born again is able to receive from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Amen, amen. Spiritually regenerated. You don't think the way that you used to. You don't have unbelief. You have belief. You begin believing in the things of God. Amen. You begin believing in his word. You begin believing in an outpouring. You begin believing in revival. You begin believing in all the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. And Romans 8. Verses 15 through 17. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children, also heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Check this out never heard this before maybe you have but I don't think you have the Holy Spirit gives us power that we never had before and I know you've heard that but first we have a body the body we have a body and the Holy Spirit makes the body a temple of the living God okay so the Holy Spirit makes the body a temple of the living God. Amen. We have a mind, and the Holy Spirit makes the mind an altar in the temple. Amen. The Holy Spirit makes the mind an altar in the temple. And then the Holy, Holy Spirit acts in us, making us a house of prayer. Amen, amen. God the Father... God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Then you have the tabernacle and all the things that the tabernacle represents. Amen. And then he calls us to be a temple of the living God, the living tabernacle. Amen. And you have a mind and a soul, but no spirit, no life. And he has to change all that. Amen. So that's what he does exactly right there. He makes the only come dwelling in you and then he makes his mind an altar why because you begin burning sacrifice you know you begin doing those incense offerings and you're speaking them out through the mind it becomes an altar Hallelujah. and then your whole body becomes a temple Praise the Lord. a house of prayer Praise a house of prayer Amen. in order for people to hear the words of God spiritually People must first be filled with the Spirit. Amen, yeah. amen, amen. People yeah. must first That's be right. filled with the Spirit. That's right. And I want you to understand something. In the book of Acts, you know, people got baptized by the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. And then they took them back yes. and washed them, gave them a, a, a water baptism. That's right. See, a lot of people now, they want to tell you, oh, yeah, well, you got to do this. There's an order to this and this. and this. No, there ain't. Yes. You know what? The Holy Spirit, God can baptize you right now. Because why? I've seen Him do it to people in a prison cell where there's no water. Lord, I want to accept you. And He baptizes them in the Holy Spirit right there. I've seen people on their deathbed who've never been baptized in water be baptized by the Holy Spirit. The Lord baptized me. And I didn't even have to be baptized in water yet. Being baptized in water is still biblical and it's something that we should do. 
It's an outside appearance to show everybody else. But guess what? God wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. God wants to empower you in these last days. He wants to set a revival right now in the churches of America. He wants to do it. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 15. We're getting close, church. One more verse after this. And we're going to come up to this altar. Yeah. Amen. I wouldn't double lie to you. <laughs> as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came down on them, just as on us at the beginning. A lot of them, they weren't baptized in water. No. But somebody was baptized by the Spirit of God. Amen. And he began to speak to individuals and the Holy Spirit Amen. fell upon them. And they got baptized Amen. in the Spirit. Amen. First Peter got filled and then spoke to the people. Amen. First you and I have to get filled and then we speak to the people. Amen. A baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Right now, God wants to let the Holy fall on your life That's right. God wants to allow the Holy Spirit to fall on other people's lives but right now in this time that we're living in we just got to break down and let God be God and say you know what Lord I want what you have for me Amen. fill me with the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus Amen. and I'm going to close with Matthew chapter 14 and we're going to read this real quickly, verses 15 through 31. When evening came, the disciples approached him and said, This place is deserted and is already late. Send the crowds away so that they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. They don't need to go away, Jesus told them. You give them something to eat. Ye man, you give them something to eat. But we only have five loaves and two fish here, they said to him. Bring them here to me, he said. Then he commanded the crowd on the grass and he took five loaves and the two fish and looked up to heaven he blessed them he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them the crowd gave them to the crowd everyone ate and was satisfied they picked up 12 baskets full of leftover pieces now those who ate were about 5,000 men beside women and children and immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side Amen. while he dismissed the crowds. And after dismissing the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Well into the night, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat was already some distance from the land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them and Jesus came toward them walking on the sea very early in the morning and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were terrified it's a ghost they said and they cried out in fear Amen. what was he doing he withdrew and he went where to go pray Amen. in the spirit in the mountain Amen. you know what it comes through prayer and it says that they seen him walking on the water and they thought that he was a ghost. Amen. Man, he must have been so prayed up, man, that he, he was already in the spirit, man. That's how you ought to look like you're in the spirit. But you got to get so prayed up that you're spiritual. That's right. That's right. Instead of looking all physical. That's right. That's right. I told you about Jane Fonda. <laughs> huh? Song of the late 80s, early 90s. <laughs> Let's get physical. <laughs> I want to look at you all on the outside. Amen. We're all fleshly. But he separated himself to get in the spirit. Amen. And people, when they seen him, they thought he was a spirit walking on the water. That's supernatural right there because he was still in the flesh. That's right. Amen. Man, and we want to see God move in mighty ways, but we're so consumed with the flesh, you know what I mean? That we need to get spiritual. And he goes, 
them. Have courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter answered him, command me to come to you on the water. Amen. And he said, come. Amen. And what did he tell the disciples to do? Amen. To pray. That's right. He said, let's withdraw from this place and pray. And he withdrew from them. Amen. Amen. The minute Peter got his eyes off of prayer. That's right. That's right. A lot of people like to say he took his eyes off of Jesus. Well, you can't talk to Jesus and you can't see Jesus if you don't have a prayer life. Amen. The minute we lose our prayer life, guess what? We begin to sink. That's right. That's and he goes on to say, and Clyde started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the, the strength of the wind, he was afraid and began to uh, sink and cry out, Lord, save me. Amen. You know, once you stop praying, you forget who you are in Christ That's Jesus. Right. Right. You lose your power. You lose your anointing. He was able to walk on that water because he was praying, man. And he had the Holy Spirit in him. But the minute he stopped praying and started thinking about everything else. How many of you know that when you start focusing on the world, you stop praying? That's right. That's right. You lose your power. You lose your anointing. That's right. And you start sinking. That's right. That's right. You start sinking. Instead of trusting in the Lord, it says immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Amen. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Amen. Amen. Man, you're going through life storms right now. You're going through troubles or whatever it may be. And you've allowed that to come in between your relationship with the Lord. Man, you were on fire for God, amen. You felt the anointing of the presence of God. You were baptized by the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden, the cares and the worries of this life have caused you to withdraw from the Lord. And now you're not praying like you should. And now you've lost your anointing. And you're sinking in the waters. But guess what? Jesus is right there, ready to stretch his hand out. And he's looking at you. And he's saying, come on. Faith, stop doing that and pray and seek me and continue to reach out for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. For an outpouring, stand with me here today, church. An outpouring of the Holy Spirit. How many of you have allowed the worries? And the troubles of this world to cause the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to consume you. How many of you have, have allowed the world to, to take away your anointing? How many of you right now feel like you're sinking in those waters because of the storm? If that's you here this morning, I want you to make your way from where you're at and I want you to come up here this morning because I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you here this morning. Everybody lift your hands in here this morning. And right now, I just want you to ask the Lord to forgive you first and foremost. Say, Father, forgive me of all of my sin. I ask you, Lord, right now to wash me in your holy, precious blood. I believe that you died on the cross of Calvary and you bore my sins in your body that you died and resurrected on the third day and right now you baptize me in the Holy Ghost I receive your presence I receive your power I receive your might for my life right now Lord empower me to walk on those waters and to never take my eyes off of you in the mighty 
name of Jesus. Amen. Begin crying out to the Lord right now, church.